So again, Francisco Girela. Um, I'm part of Safran, uh, a company that specializes in navigation and timing uh, solutions. And I'm here to speak about high accuracy time synchronization for quantum networking, uh, but also uh, potentially quantum computing. So to start with, I would like to go over some terminology, uh, how I will be explaining things. Uh, I will speak about accuracy and precision. Um, time is lapsing, so it's not good uh, to be accurate one single time, but you need to be accurate over time. So the repeatability of the accuracy is what we call the precision. So accurate will be hitting the uh, center of the target. Uh, precision will be hitting the center of the target all the time. So what we are seeing and the reason why uh, me, a uh, classical time synchronization solution uh, vendor, um, is doing within the quantum or is here explaining about how this technology could uh, be used in, in quantum is the fact that we started receiving more and more inquiries from, from quantum uh, networking experiments that are moving from the lab to real scenarios where they have different equipment far away one from the others. So uh, White Rabbit, which is the solution that I will be uh, presenting later, is actually the, the way that they are synchronizing all the different elements that they have in their quantum networks. So for, at the end of the day, uh, having this uh, mm, photon coincidence uh, to preserve the coherence that they uh, need in order to measure the, the quantum states and the quantum information that they are distributing, what they are doing is synchronizing using uh, these technologies. So with this, White Rabbit, which is the technology that we use for high accuracy time synchronization. It's a technology very easy to integrate. It's a classical uh, network protocol that works over Ethernet networks. So mostly any optical fiber that you see out there will be able to, to benefit from White Rabbit and high accuracy time synchronization. And it's very scalable. So you can deploy not only far away, but also expand on the number of nodes that you have in place. So if you need uh, to provide synchronization to a system that has 1,000 end users, you can still do it. And how do we do that? Uh, so we have what we, um, we have Ethernet as the basis for, for this uh, time synchronization protocol. So what we will typically do is deploy in a topology where you have a reference, an atomic clock or a GNSS time server you will get that reference into, or the, into the white rabbit network, and from there you will be distributing to all the different white rabbit nodes that you have all over the place. And thanks to the fact that Ethernet is exchanging classical information and classical bits uh, all the time, what we are actually able to do is to um, generate copies of the clock that we have uh, from the reference in each one of the, of the different units in the, in the network. If you are familiar with, white, uh, with uh, time synchronization, you are probably familiar with the different standards that are out there, including PTP, Precision Time Protocol, and Synchronous Ethernet. So basically, White Rabbit is a combination of both, uh, where you have all the different devices, synchronize, sharing the same clock frequency, and then you have a PTP exchange that allow you to remove any offset between them with uh, the addition of a few uh, tweaks uh, on to guarantee that you are able to achieve this sub nanosecond accuracy. So as you can see, I'm comparing uh, this uh, technology with the standard uh, PTP protocol. What we are adding is mostly this part of the communication. So all the acknowledgement and all the white rabbit specific packets that we are exchanging between the units. This is giving some additional information that I will cover a little bit later uh, on internal delays, asymmetries, sources of error that you can remove. But most of the communications, uh, the communication is very similar to the pre uh, precision time protocol, which is a classical packet exchange where we will be exchanging packets 
time stamping them with very high accuracy, and thanks to the time stamping information that we obtain, we are able to figure out the offset between the different units. So why do we exchange uh, white rabbit information? So this uh, part that is uh, specific for this protocol. So the reason why we, are, why we do that is because we are targeting very high accuracy, picosecond level accuracy. So in that sense, uh, everything matters. Everything has a delay, everything includes some noise on the time synchronization, and it's something that we need to account for. Internal delays in the hardware platform, uh, the, the delay on the SFP transceivers that uh, generate the lasers that we are exchanging, asymmetries on the propagation delay over the optical fibers that we use to distribute from one source to the other, everything matters. And that's information that we need to, we need to exchange in order to correct and being able to maintain this sub nanosecond accuracy, which is our goal. So, some results. Uh, here an experiment with a daisy chain of white rabbit units with 10 hops. Actually, one of the, of the chains is all short distances, so few feet of distance between that. For example, you could imagine this working on a quantum co uh, computer. The other test is including a 50 kilometer uh, hop uh, between two of the, of the white rabbit units to simulate a situation where you are actually uh, having a quantum network and you are synchronizing different uh, ends of the, of the quantum network in place. What you can see is that in terms of timing, the sub-nanosecond sub accuracy is pretty much uh, always there uh, with some static offset that are accumulative depending on the number of, hope, of hopes that you have in place, but maintaining um, a jitter, overall jitter, which remains uh, pretty accurate in the tens of picoseconds level. So with a proper integration of the, of the jitter, uh, you can actually uh, be able to, to compare or to synchronize or to schedule events happening in different locations to the picosecond level. And I actually recommend some uh, talks from the DCQNet uh, people in, in Washington DC where they have been testing this technology in their campuses uh, and they have been able to, to come out with uh, real numbers for their uh, experiments. In terms of uh, phase and frequency distribution, uh, the performance is even better. So when we are speaking about high accuracy, we are speaking about time synchronization and frequency synchronization, so clocks uh, and so on. If you go uh, or if you focus on the, on the clock part of it, we are able to distribute clock frequencies with femtosecond level uh, precision. So below the picosecond level in multiple hops, which is uh, a very efficient and high accuracy way to distribute uh, sources like an atomic clock or a GNSS time receiver uh, in, a, in a specific location. So speaking a little bit more about the different scenarios that we will typically find, so these results that I mentioned uh, cover mostly local areas uh, below 10 kilometers where we basically provide off-the-shell devices that are pre-calibrated in most cases. So it's almost a plug-and-play technology. When we go for uh, longer distances, we start seeing uh, some other uh, noise factors uh, applying to the, to the time synchronization, and they are mostly associated to the optical infrastructure that we have in place. So in metro areas, we are used to work on uh, these kind of optical links that are very simple, uh, not that much active elements or anything that is retiming re or buffering the information. So at the end of the day, it's mostly uh, the, the dispersion and the temperature variations on the elements that are affecting the time synchronization. So with some techniques, uh, in those scenarios, we are still able to uh, maintain not only sub-nanosecond accuracy, but sub 
100 picoseconds uh, accuracy. This is a, an example of a deployment that we have done for the Square Kilometer Array a radio telescope in South Africa. So we have uh, this radio telescope with optical fibers hanging in the air in the middle of the desert. Um, and what we find there is that even when we are experiences, experiencing um, very high excursions on the temperature, the protocol itself is, how, is capable to autocompensate for that and maintain a very accurate time distribution uh, for the, between the different locations that are out there. So it's not only a nice way to have high accuracy technology, but it, it is also uh, a technology that is able to, uh, to cope or to, to manage uh, the environmental circumstances that you will be facing in a real network deployed out there, uh, out of the, of the lab, for sure. And we have uh, some other scenarios where we go with uh, regular telecom networks, uh, not, of course, not quantum uh, oriented or designed, but where we have a lot of elements and multiplexing uh, of different signals. So things become more and more and more and more complicated. So uh, still, depending on how those networks are engineered, we can work with those and still maintain the sub nanosecond accuracy. So it's not all the cases. In those scenarios, we need to actually see how the, the optical network was engineered and, and, and deploy the technology in a, in a way that is uh, you know, adapted to that. But we are still able to maintain sub nanosecond accuracy. And an example is a, a link that this is the longest white rabbit link that we have ever deployed, which connected New York City and Chicago. And we were able to maintain uh, an estimated noise in the one nanosecond RMS jitter for the whole link using this technology. Much better than any GPS uh, solution that you might find out there, uh, comparable with any I mean, with any of the most uh, evolved technologies in order to synchronize places that are remote one from, from the other. So White Rabbit, as I mentioned, high accuracy, Ethernet based, uh, targeting very, very uh, stringent uh, accuracies and precision for the, for the frequency distribution. But it comes with the fact that you need White Rabbit uh, accuracy. Uh, white rabbit uh, devices, which is very much the same that you will find with any other technology. PTP, precision time protocol, uh, if you are doing timing based on GPS, you will also uh, find that you will need the hardware for that. But however, with white rabbit, you can have a, a little bit more of accuracy. And uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, in most quantum computers, you are uh, right now doing some kind of uh, time distribution based on analog cables, one pulse per second, 10 megahertz, uh, something similar. So avoiding the calibration of all these cables is something that you can do also with White Rabbit in, in a smaller scenarios. So actually doing the, or easing the deployment of this technology, it's something that you can do with White Rabbit. So a call to action, uh, I'm actually part of the OCP Time Appliance project that is exhibiting here. We have a table there with a live demo with two white rabbit devices that are connected to an oscilloscope and we are showing how, they, how well they synchronize. So you can come and visit me, I will be there. Um, if not, uh, we are happy to explore any other avenues to make white rabbit work uh, in, in collaboration with any uh, quantum developer around here or any uh, people that is running it, any sort of experiment. Thank you. Are there any questions for Francisco before we uh, move on to our next speaker? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much.